Hey, Internet friend, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative and magicbrad.com. And I've got a friend and his name is Rocky. And no, it's not that Sylvester Stallone guy. This is Rocky and the last name is Romanella. Are you there, Rocky? Hey, how you doing, Brad? Yes, I am. How you yes, doing? I but a last name like Romanella, though, I could be related to Sylvester Stallone. You could, but, yeah. but you're not, right? No, no absolutely not. I think and we're my all. My name is not Adrian either. <laughs> we're, we're, we're all related. Yes. <laughs> Where, where are you from? Because I forgot to I, ask you. I actually live in South Jersey. Uh, exit 7A off the turnpike, a Jersey person <laughs> with uh, completely know what I'm talking about there. Exactly. I've been there. I was, I did a, I was working with a friend that has the National Mail Order Association, and we were at a direct, uh, what is it, the DMA, Direct Marketing Association okay. trade show out there, and I went to Jersey. It's the only time there I was there. Ah, it's a great place. It is. I like your ad. I like the East Coast attitude where they say, "This is how you're going to do it. Let's just get this done." Well, you know? it's because we don't have a lot of time. See, people yeah. think East Coast people are rude. They're not rude. Let's They're get very it done. Polite. They're just focused. Let's go. We got to get stuff done. Let's get it done. I Let's move totally on. agree. Whereas the Midwest, you never get it. Never do anything. You just kind of like, oh, yeah, let me talk to no, my wife. No, that's not true. I lived in Iowa. Some of the greatest people. <laughs> well, I was different. <laughs> Let me tell you, with a name like Rocky Romanella living in Iowa, the number one question I got asked is, hey, are you in a witness protection program? <laughs> Had some good stories living in Iowa. No, but I know some people, right? <laughs> well, everybody from Jersey, every Jersey guy, I, we got a guy. I got a guy for that. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I was down in Costa Rica just last week, and that's uh, kind of what a guy said, is because uh, we were talking with some lawyers and stuff, and we got to get this stuff done. And he says, uh, I got a guy. <laughs> yeah, he's probably Costa Rican from New Jersey. <laughs> so, are you married? You got kids and all that kind of thing? Married to a wonderful wife, Debbie. Uh, we have four beautiful children. And uh, as I tell people, I had some great titles along the way in my career, but none better than my current title, which is grandpa. So, we have four <laughs> grandchildren. So, uh, two, one, and uh, one is six, five weeks old, and one is four weeks old. Woohoo! I don't have any. My wife's got one from another marriage, but I don't have any, so I don't really know what it's like. But I have been a magician most of my life, so I perform for kids, so I, I know what they can be like. Uh, they, <laughs> when that smile, when they connect the dots or they notice, recognize you, that's the greatest feeling in the world. There you go. So I don't do these too long because we've got that commodity of time that is uh, limited for all of us. You know, it's uh, 24 hours in a day. So we'll kind of run through this and find out what is it that Rocky does. What do you do, Rocky? Rocky Romanella is a retired UPSer after 36 years and then uh, was recruited to be a CEO of a telecom company. Uh, we had a sale, and so I moved on from that. So the one thing you're learning about Rocky is I, I failed miserably at this retirement situation. <laughs> so um, I found out uh, upon my first day of retirement, following my wife around the food store, it doesn't work real well. I get myself in more trouble. So I started a company a few years ago called 360 Management Services. And we have three legs of our stool at 360. One is keynote speaking, which I do. Uh, we have leadership training classes, which are well received for such companies like Prudential and some very large organizations. It's just and some small companies. Uh, we speak on such topics as why values matter, leadership development, having difficult conversations. And then the third leg of our stool is our, our consulting component. Okay, so is it mostly business to business kind of stuff, that sounds like? Uh, it may, it, in many in many instances it is because you're building processes, but uh, I always think that we're business to consumer. We, we, we do a lot on sales, value, value selling, uh, those kinds of things. But at the end of the day, we really go in and take a look at what is it that an organization is trying to accomplish? And then ha what is their process is to accomplish those end results? To me, it's all about process. You know, that's an area that uh, I've been in business pretty much all my life. But the whole idea of like like hiring a consultant or somebody that is going to help us with our business, it's kind of like, we know our business. How would you know anything about our business? But the reality is that, like my wife is a coach, the reality is is you got to have somebody else that can see it from a different perspective and see all the things that you probably don't see on the inside. Is that your approach too? Yeah, I would think that that's true. I think, but I think the key is to me is always that first step, and that first step is to attempt to uh, take a day or, or walk a day in the shoes of the individuals you're working with. I think sometimes what, and I, through my days at either UPS or when I was at Unitech as a CEO, I mean, the thing that always gets you about consultants is day one, they're telling you what you're doing wrong. Well, how about how about we try to do a little bit of an assessment of our, of our business, like who we are, you know, what we stand for, what we're trying to accomplish. And I think 
that's the first step is, is that whole assessment piece because then I think you you gain respect from the organization that you're trying to do business with and so I never liked that feeling so in our world what we try to do is say okay like for example under our sales training uh, you know a company will call us in and say hey we're not hitting our sales goals we think we need some sales training and my first step is well that may be true but how about if we go spend a day with each of your sales executives and get to know them and get to know the customer and, and get to see how they go about doing their business. And I think what you find, you learn so much when you spend that day with the individual. Sure. Like there was a friend of mine used to do trade show sales training and he tells a story about a, a guy that was going to buy some phones and it was for these uh, construction workers. And they, the guy with the salesperson was showing him all the fancy buttons and the put on hold and the sound and all this kind of stuff. And the guy says, I want that one. And it was just a regular basic phone with no features. And they asked him later, why did you buy that? He says, I work with construction thing, work workers. They got big fingers. They need big buttons. No, that's exactly right. I mean, you have to, you know, know what's... You know, I learned that early on at UPS. We had a promotion from within policy. I started working at UPS in 1976. So I'm showing my age there a little bit. And <laughs> I started unloading trailers, working my way through college. And so then became a UPS driver. And so we had a promotion from within policy, but in those days, everyone had a drive. And so for me, the valuable lesson I learned is that that gave me credibility and it allowed me to fully understand the process. Mm -hmm. you know, how do we deliver a package? And so I, 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 to me, that was important throughout my career. And, that, and I tried to use that, that example throughout. We, we purchased mailboxes, et cetera, and rebranded to the UPS store. That became a direct report to me at that point in my career. And the first thing I did was go out and spend a day in a store. You know, right. at Unitech, we were building cell towers and upgrading cell towers. And the first thing I did was go out and spend a day at a, you know, try to spend a day in a cell, at a cell site. Now, did I climb a tower? No, I wasn't qualified. And I shouldn't do those things unless I'm qualified. But I wanted to get out there and meet our tower climbers sure. and get a chance to understand what they do and how they do it. I think that's so important in your example of consulting. I mean, I think a lot of times what turns companies off is, okay, I show up and then I immediately start to, I begin the process of telling you what you're doing wrong or what you can do to fix it and how I can do that for you. Yeah, that's what I want to hear. How about if I go spend a day with your people or spend a day inside your organization and then start to decide, you know, what is, really, what, what is it that we really need to accomplish? So, so do you work in any specific industry or niche, uh, vertical, or are you kind of like anybody that needs our help? No, I'm really, we're really about process. So when you think about it from that perspective, we, we can help almost any company because the first thing we do is take a look at once we learn their business and get to know them a little bit is what's their process, right? Because process right. is the key. Yep. Um, I say that too. There's basically three things. is generate the lead, build a relationship, close a sale. That's all it really is. <laughs> right. Well, if and, you, did, you know, and you know this as well, but if you spend a day with an account executive, um, most of them are hardworking and most of them want, want to, there's, re, there's no reason for them not to want to achieve their sales goals, right? Because right. most of them are on some form of incentive. And so you start to say to yourself, well, what are some of the things that, you know, prevent them from being successful? In many cases, it starts with preparation. You know, are you prepared for the sale? You know, what's your game plan going into that sale, right? Most times account executive, they're, they're excited to get in there, the, you know, and they're having that relationship piece. But at the end of the day, what's the plan? Are we going to ask for new business? Are we going to, are we trying to go deeper and wider inside that customer? Is there a sales? Is there, has there been a disconnect, which is going to prevent us from asking for business that day? So that's all the preparation piece. And so that's part of the process. What's my process before I go in and visit with the customer? Okay. Yep. That's, I think that's very important. And I, I totally agree with you. It is pretty much the same thing through all businesses. You can go into pretty much any vertical. And so, uh, you you have a book or something, don't you? Oh yes, I do. Thank you. Have for a, do you have it's a copy Titan. of it? Yeah, it's called Tighten the Lug Nuts. It's uh, it's, <laughs> it's uh, that's probably a good idea. Yeah. It's a, well, you know, it's a it's great. There's a lot of stories in the book. I wrote the book from a third person perspective. A gentleman by the name of Joe Scafone. Uh, how did Joe Scafone come about? Through my years of in management positions or leadership roles, I never liked the feeling of sitting at a meeting or someone brings me an idea. You know, Brad brings me this idea and I say, well, you know, Brad, that's a good idea, but I would maybe look at it this way. I always felt like that sort of hindered maybe a dialogue or maybe put you at a little bit of a disadvantage because now you're thinking, well, maybe Rocky doesn't like my my idea or sure. whatever. So I created this character, Joe Scafone. So Brad would, you know, we're sitting in a meeting and you bring an idea. I would say, you know, Brad, that's a good idea, but what do you think Joe Scafone would do? 
I think Joe Scafaldi thinks that's a oh, good idea. Great. That's we would great. laugh. And, but that was my way of challenging you to not maybe stop at the first right answer, maybe to look past that first right answer or challenge you to be the best you could with that idea, but not put you at a disadvantage or make you feel like, wow, you know, he, he doesn't really like the idea. That's brilliant. So, <laughs> so Joe Scafone became this character. And so in fact, if, if you said, you know, Rocky, they would say, well, you probably know Joe as well. So Joe Scafone became that character. And so when I wrote the book, it, it's, it's a book on, you know, not so much my career, but the lessons I learned along the way on my career, the people who helped me, the mentoring that ha happened both by me and by others. And so I felt like I wrote it in a story form. And uh, so there's uh, some great stories in there. And uh, I always ask people after they read the book, they always I say, hey, tell me your favorite story in the book. So if you get a chance to read the book, Brad, or if you like when we're done, you can give me your address. I'll send you a signed copy of the book. And we can uh, you can tell me your favorite story when you're done. Sounds good. So it's called Tighten the Lug Nuts. Tighten the Lug Nuts. That makes sense if a guy's driving a UPS truck. Well, I got to tell you, there's a story in there. I won't, I won't give it away, but there is a story how the title becomes the title. So it's pretty interesting. Okay. Well, before I get into asking my favorite question, and uh, people that hear my videos, they know what my favorite question is, and that's the big why question. Why are you doing this? But first, how do we get a hold of you, and do you have anything special to offer or any place you're speaking that people should know about or anything like that? So uh, you can reach me at our website at www. It's the number three. And then the word 60, S-I-X-T-Y, managementservices.com. If I had to do over again, I probably would have had a shorter name and a little easier than that. But it's So let's see if I can get it. It's the number three right. and the word 60. And managementservices.com. Managementservices.com. And it's a very interactive website. And, and I get a lot of uh, you know questions. People ask mm -hmm. me about situations that may happen with them. And I enjoy that dialogue. Well, you know, you can always grab another domain name and just point it to it. I think we're going to have to do that because it's, I've, it's, I've uh, have lots of them. Yeah, yeah, it's just like it's just way too long. <laughs> it's, it's easy to do. See, it sounded brilliant when we started the company a few years ago. Well, I've got uh, Synergy Lifestyle Academy, and I've got Synergy Collaborative. I also got MagicBrad.com.me.net. I got ah, Follow go. Magic Brad, Thrive with Magic Brad, MagicBrad.tv. So all I do is I use a domain because I own that, and I'm I trust GoDaddy, and yes. I can point it to wherever I want to. So. That's yeah, we fine. haven't heard anything bad about them yet, so it's, uh, <laughs> we can at least do that in the short term. And well, then, Rocky, uh, right, and Rocky my here's my... Is, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Rocky, my RockyRomanella at gmail.com if you want to get in touch with me that way. Okie dokie. I will put them in the yes. video when I put it up there, but uh, here's my favorite question. That's the big why question. Why are you doing this as opposed to being retired, or why didn't you start like a junior hockey league or... Why ain't you running a restaurant, senior from Jersey or something? Why are you doing well, this? Those, those are all some really good questions. It's ironic you should ask about a junior hockey league because both my boys played hockey. In fact, my I know son that. played in college. <laughs> there you go. That's it. That's why you're Magic Brad. It's magical. Yeah. And uh, it's, I, so that was pretty interesting when you said that. And Rocky, my son Rocky, ironically, saying that it was uh, played hockey at Delaware and was actually the Delaware hockey coach. So oh, does he get like was, hockey right? Rocky or something like that? Oh, uh, yeah, I was. Well, who knew he was going to play hockey and be that good? But uh, <laughs> but no, uh, for me, it's all about this concept of legacy. So for me, legacy is this concept of, and I really think it's a measure of were you a good leader or not and what was, what was your legacy? And to me, it comes down to a couple of questions. Do you leave things about do you leave things a little better than you found them? Are people better because of their time with you? And so for me, I felt like I had a, a blessed with a wonderful career, met some great people along the way, people who really took time to put their arm around me and help me through some difficulties. And hopefully I did that for some other folks. And I learned a lot. So after 40 years, I thought, why not be able to, why not give back on the business side? And so for me, it was this concept of, you know, legacy. And so the uh, public speaking gives me that opportunity to do that. Uh, the book gave me an opportunity. So when you when you see the book, Brad, you'll see it's laid out not only in a story form, but each chapter has a series of one, two, or three lessons in there. Uh, and, and it's not meant to preach or not meant to say, oh, you should do it this way. It's more meant to maybe have an aha moment. Oh, okay, I, that's a good way of looking at it. Or maybe mm -hmm. I can do it differently. So this gave me a chance to stay involved. It gave me a chance to... You know, per, you know, give back and, and also maybe help some other folks along the way. And so that's that's really why I, I, I'm doing the things I'm doing. It keeps me young, keeps me active, and yeah. keeps me 
it's not enough that I can't spend time with the grandkids or spend time with Debbie, but it also gives me a chance to stay involved and, and get out there and do the speaking. And, uh, you know, ironically, originally I went to college to be a high school history teacher and a baseball coach. So in some ways <laughs> I'm doing this generationally later on, right? Because I'm teaching and coaching and you know, my career as well as through this, uh, you know, the speaking and the consulting and the leadership training. Well, I get you on the retirement thing. I'm uh, just turned 60 last June, and I'm about to turn 61, and this is retirement to me. So I don't <laughs> well, want to retire you. either. Just keep and on I'll be going. 61 in May, so we'll look at that. we have a lot in common. Well, I'm going to sign this one off and put it in a can and beam it up to the universe for people to find. If you want to stay on after, we'll have a little chat. Other than that, I'm going to sign this one off, and uh, we will move on. That's great, Brad. Thank you. Thank you, and the crowd goes wild. <laughs> Thanks, Rocky.